Hello, everybody. This is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there, we have John Lewandowski. Hey. Oh, so, everybody. Preds fan. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, Memorial Day or had a proud one. Um, we, uh, we enjoyed ours. Um, yep. We stayed silent. Uh, in uh, memory of uh, the the troops that had fallen, uh, yeah. we observed a weekend of silence. Yeah, but it was a pretty loud weekend in hockey. Yeah. So we're gonna get into uh, our playoff wrap up, so we can get towards our draft stuff for this group. All righty. So starting it off, we're gonna start off with talking a little bit about some of our things that we wanted to talk about off the jump. They were hot button topics. Get them done. So we're going to get the hot topics out of the way. First topic. No Rocco Grimaldi. Rocco Grimaldi on the year played in 40 games, 10 goals, 3 assists, 13 points. That was good enough for 14th on the team and tied yeah. in Duchesne. <laughs> Personally, I don't see why you started Duchesne over. You knew that Carolina was a speedy team. Duchesne's more of a flutter and finesse kind of guy. So you're not going to get that out of him. Or right. Aldi, you're going to get the speed, grip, and scoring. You're going to get a little, bit of, a little bit of everything. So I don't understand why he didn't play. It, it makes no sense to me. Especially with Arvidsson out, which is another thing. Um, the other thing that got me was no Fabro either. Fabro had 12 points on the year. That's more than Harper, more than Benning, more than Gabranson, right. more than Borovesky. I mean, what? You're telling me that you're not going to play these guys? Right. You know? And he had a better plus minus than, well, outside of Harper, he had a better plus minus than Benning. And a better plus minus than, well, not better than Branson, but better than Borovesky. But let's talk about the playoffs, because that's a hot button topic. All right. So, point leaders. Mikel Granlin, Ryan Ellis. Yeah. Five points apiece. Both played in all six games. Right. Granlin had two goals, three assists. I say Nashville re-signed him. I mean, you had 27 points on the season with a minus one. In right. the playoffs, you had a minus three with five points. Obviously, in this case, we got outskilled. But we'll get into that more later. All right. Yeah. Ellis, six games played, one goal, three, four, uh, uh, one goal, four assists, five points, minus one. Not bad. Moving on. No. Moving on. Ryan Johansson, six games played, three goals, one assist, four points. Right. Uh, same thing with Hala and Yossi, four points. Moving on. Forsberg, got to show up a little more. Got to show that scoring touch. But when you don't play guys like Grimaldi and guys like Tolvanen sometimes with those guys, he's not going to be able to produce because there's right. nobody taking somebody off of him. They're able to send everybody to him because they yeah. know where it's going. It, it just doesn't work. Duchesne does not have that because they already know that it's going to go off the post. Um, Ekholm, six games played, three points plus two, moving on. Duchesne, three games, six games played, three points plus one. He showed up in the playoffs during the regular season for one. Would actually help us not have to worry about being a wild card team. Right. You know? But 
like you said in your interview today, you know that it, you screwed up and you're in your head too much. Maybe it's time to walk away from the game. If you can't get out of your head and it's messing with you too much, maybe it is time to get out of the game. You said you want to end as a pred. You keep playing like this, you'll be ending somewhere else or you're going to be forced to retire. If you want to end your career with Nashville. Because that's what he said in his interview. Yakov Trenin, rookie, two goals. I, I couldn't be more proud of Trenin. Um, yeah. Amazing. Worked his butt off. Right. Coonan, same thing. Luke Coonan, same exact thing. Worked his right. butt off and kept us in the series. Sissons, two assists, minus one, moving on. Carrier, two assists and a plus one. That's a good stat. Yeah. Um, Yarncroc, one assist, minus one. Yeah, Yarncroc, you guys show up in the playoffs, but I could understand with you having an injury right before the playoffs. Why? Right. Uh, ben Harper, minus two and one point. I think you're gone after this year. Nashville's got enough young defensemen to kind of go through that. Right. Tanner Janot, five games played, one assist, minus one. Pretty good. Yeah. For for Janot. For Janot. Yeah. Listen here. Janot is a great player. He's not going to give you points every game. But for him to have a playoff point, period, as a rookie in five games against a team like Carolina is impressive. Yeah. It's going right. This was somewhat of a young team. It's weird saying that since the last few years, we've kind of had an old team. Right. Um, Gabranson, no points, minus one. <laughs> nah. I can take him or leave him. Brad Richardson, yeah. I don't understand why he play, they played him. He only played 17 games all year. I just didn't understand it. Right. Um, Olivier, two games played in a minus three. You took Jano out. Or put Olivier in a spot where you could have had Rocco Grimaldi. Right. Enough said. Billy Tolvin in four games played. No points, but no minuses either. Right. So that's a good sign. Matt Benning, minus three, no points, six penalty minutes. Not really mad about that either. No. Shining star of the playoffs. Juice. Yeah. Played all six games. 2.78 goals against with a .921 save percentage. And he lost yeah. the series. We lost the series, and he's putting up numbers like that. Right. It wasn't him. It was everybody else. If it's everybody else, that's the coach's problem. Yeah. So given that situation, it is very tough to look back and go, What are you thinking? But with that, I'm going to get into some of the comments made. Pecorine. Pecorine on Saros. First off, Sar Pecorine said Saros saved the Fred season and where they were in the playoffs because of him. Yeah. Uh, Pekka, don't take nothing away from yourself, man. I'm going to say this. If it weren't for the few games you played while Saros was out, we wouldn't even been in that position. Right. To do that. So Saros, don't take, or Pekka, don't take nothing away from yourself, even though much kudos to you for being a good veteran leader in the locker room and giving Saros his prop. Right. Going no disdain. Now, Pekka did say he wants to retire at the top of his game. And is not slamming the door shut to going to another NHL team. But, and I'm going to say but, because hear this, and believe it when I say it, 
Nashville is not going to let him walk easy. <laughs> no. They want him to retire with us. Yeah. So, whatever his decision is, I respect it because it's what's best for him and his family. He said in his interview as well that he was going to take the time to talk with his family and really think about it. The passion and love of the game and the ability is still there, he said. Right. It's, do I want to? Yeah. And that's where that comes down to. And a lot of times, that's where most guys are at this point. Do I right. got the ability, but do I want to? You know? Or do I have to? Right. Do I have to? He's got nothing left to prove to any of us. No. He don't got to prove nothing to us. He's a legend in this organization, and rightfully so. He is the winningest pin goaltender of all time. And be darned, and I'm going to say this, it's going to be very difficult to break all of his records that he has set. Yeah. By the way, I'll be waiting for the next Nashville Predators goalie to score a goal. Right. That's very few and far in general, to let alone have Chris Mason and him to do it. But with that, we got one more for you tonight, folks. And we're out of here. It's getting late. We're getting tired. So. Yep.